because I'm going fast, I covered an awful lot of miles on that bicycle that day. Well, actually, while we're filming, uh, just in front of me, the Blue Peter camera has got to keep a steady pace. Of course, the cameraman isn't on a bike as well. He's on a special camera truck. And if you collect model cars, then keep your eyes open for this one, because it's just come out. It's an exact replica of the truck that we use when we take the Blue Peter cameras out. It's a Commerce Series one-ton truck, and it's been specially adapted to hold a camera on a tripod, and the tripod is then fixed onto this little platform here, and the platform, in turn, is attached to the roof rack of the truck. Now, the model comes complete with the cameraman and the camera. And the thing I like about this camera is it's actually got a lens in there. You can see it glinting. And also, you can turn it through 180 degrees so you can pan all the way around. Now, just like the real truck, this platform pulls off and fixes on the front of the vehicle like that. So you can film from the front, or it will come onto the back and clip on there. And with the... Oop, can't get you on. Yeah, it's on there. And with the two doors open there, there's plenty of room for the whole camera crew inside and, of course, all the extra equipment needed for filming. There's also a suitcase for the cameraman's equipment. And it was with the Blue Peter camera fixed at the back like this that I was filmed cycling round London. And this was the picture you saw. Me peddling like mad for all I was worth and getting puffed out. But if you happened to be passing while we're actually filming, you would have seen something like this. You would have still seen me just the same, but I wasn't alone because on the truck in front of me was cameraman Nat Crosby operating the Blue Peter camera and sound recordist Bob Roberts, who's pointing a microphone at me and taking down everything that I'm saying on a tape recorder. And of course, not forgetting the director of the film, Tim Byford, who tells the crew what sort of pictures we want. Well, me, I'm getting a bit puffed. How about the rest then, Tim? OK, John, my cut. When the director shouts cut, the film crew stop filming, the van pulls into the side of the road, ready to prepare for the next scene, and I can take a breather. Oh, oh great, John. Oh, OK. Very glad. I don't think I can do it again. Oh, well, if it's slightly late now, we've got to change the uh, platform to the front. Yeah. And we'll do the shots of you from behind. Yeah. When I'm out with the Blue Peter cameras, I can't, of course, see what I'm doing myself. So I rely on the director to tell me how each scene looks and also to make sure that by the end of the day, we've got all the different pictures we need. I think my legs are going to jump off. Each different scene is identified by a number chalked on a wooden board. When everyone's ready, the director tells the cameraman to switch on. Okay, John, stand by. Turn over now. Turning. Sound running. Mark it. Okay. The scene is now identified on both sound and picture. Action! The cry action from the director meant that I had to start peddling with the van in full pursuit. The cameraman now had a picture of me on a bike as seen from behind. The distance between me and the camera had to be kept very steady in order for the cameraman to get a good picture of me. And once I'd established my speed, the van driver had to make sure that he drove at exactly the same speed. At this point, the director asked the cameraman to change the picture to a close-up of my feet. Now, Blue Peter film story Noakes on a Bike was well underway. is if the truck was filming you, who was filming the truck? Well, we had another truck alongside filming that truck, but to get a shot of that truck, we'd need yet another truck. 
Gosh, it's complicated. You, you could go on indefinitely. <laughs> Actually, after the uh, film was shot, it was sent off to be developed, just like you send off a roll of film to get developed to the chemist. But the sound which you saw being recorded uh, on the tape by Bob goes off to be transferred onto this special brown film, and it's called a soundtrack. Then the whole lot goes off to the Blue Peter film cutting room, which is in the same building as the Blue Peter office. There it's in the hands of film editor Peter Hill, whose job is to sort out all the different scenes we filmed, fit the correct soundtrack to each scene, put all the scenes in the correct order, and of course take out all the bits we don't want to show on the screen, such as the identification board at the beginning of each scene. The machine is called an Acmaid, and we've got one here in the studio from the cutting room to show you. But in order to show you, we need the lights out first. So could we have the lights out, please? The uh, film actually runs along the front of the machine. There it is. You can see that little bit of film. And this is projected back to the back of the machine onto a screen. There it is. Now, the sound is laid, that brown tape is laid on at the back, you can just see it there, and the sound then comes out of this loudspeaker here, like this. And this was the picture you saw, me spending like mad for all I was worth, and getting fucked and when, out. When Peter Hill wants to stop the film, he just presses that button there, and to make it run backwards, that one. So I think backwards and speaking Russian, John. No, I'm, good, I'm eh? very clever, I am. Well, as we said just now, Peter Hill's first job is to exactly match the soundtrack to the picture on the film. For instance, whatever John is saying on the soundtrack must exactly match up to the movement of his lips on the film. And this is where the clapperboard comes in. Well, the first thing you see on the film is the clapperboard. Now, if I run this back, we'll eventually get to the clapperboard, and then I can stop it there again clapper boards there opening and i stop it there now by this handle down here if i turn this i can turn this film very slowly frame by frame until the hinge part comes down and hits the board on top and also on the soundtrack you get the noise from this and it's by finding this noise on the soundtrack and exactly matching it up with the picture of the clapperboard being clapped on the film that Peter Hill gets the correct soundtrack to each shot all the way through the film. Now, if I just run this film back a little more, oh, yes. no. beyond the sound, I think that's about it. Now, when we start to run the film forward, you'll hear someone say, take one, shot one. So let's see if we can hear that. One, take one. That was it. Take, uh, shot one, take one. Now, this corresponds to the picture on the clapperboard, which says, shot one, take one. Now, if I run them both together now, they should be in sync, and I should be talking as I'm going along. So, cross your fingers. Here we go. That's right. Right. And this was the picture you saw. Me spending like mad for all I was worth. So on every out. Blue Peter you... film, this process has to be done, oh, some two dozen times, I should think, yes, so you can see it's pretty complicated. I think we'll leave the edit into Peter Hill and good luck to him. We'll stick to just appearing in the film. Well, at least right. you know <laughs> when you see us appearing in our Blue Peter films from now on that an awful lot of people have put in an awful lot of work to make that film possible on your screens. We'll be back again on Monday and I'll be showing you what happened when I went shopping with a lion. And we'll be showing you the latest methods for free fall, for training free fall parachutists. So see you on Monday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.